Welcome to the View from the ADB meeting. I'm Kimberly Long, Asia Editor of the Banker, and I'm here with President Takahiko Nakao of the ADB, um, and we're going to talk around the plans of the ADB for the future and the issues that are being seen in the Pacific Islands at this time. So, President Nakao, thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you very much, and I'm very honored to be here, and uh, thank you. Thank you. So to begin with, we were going to talk around the uh, economy in Asia um, and the challenges that are being seen at this time. It's a very unique time, I think, now for the for the region. So what is the ADB doing to um, to help at this time? And are there any plans to refocus on different parts of the region? Mm. It's very important uh, time because uh, we have uh, more opportunities in Asia and the uh, Pacific, uh, this time we have a meeting in Fiji. Mm -hmm. uh, there are many opportunities such as uh, digital uh, technologies and uh, IT uh, uh, and AI, which can be used by these uh, countries, including Pacific. But there are also some uncertainty in the region, uh, uh, including uh, slowdown of uh, China's economy, trade uh, tension between countries, and also the possible negative impact from AI, and also Brexit is a possible uh, kind of uncertainty in the global economy. So there are many uh, opportunities, but uh, challenges. So, but overall, I think uh, Asian economy is, is uh, very solid, and uh, we are expecting uh, growth of uh, our membership, uh, developing countries in Asia, 5.7% growth this year. But excluding uh, needs countries, uh, newly industrialized uh, emerging economies such as uh, Korea, Taipei, China, Hong Kong, China, and Singapore, four countries excluding, uh, it will be 6.2 percent. So although there is a lot of discussion about slowdown, if we grow by 6 percent every year, we can grow by, uh, we can double uh, the economy in 12 years. So it's not so slow. So I think uh, Asian economies will continue to grow based on the consumptions, uh, domestic demand, and also productive uh, capacity of the regions. Some positive impact uh, in some countries because of relocations of uh, uh, the productions. Although if uh, trade tension is uh, totally full-blown, escalated, of course uh, it would have negative impact on any countries in the regions as well as in the uh, global economy. And considering we're in Fiji, um, there's a lot of talk around the Pacific Islands. So I think this region really faces a lot of very unique mm -hmm. um, economic, economic and uh, ecological challenges as well. Yes. So how is the ADB supporting this region? Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, we are now increasing our lending in the, uh, our membership, uh, not uh, just the Pacific, but including other regions. And our lending last year, and also grant operations included, uh, it was uh, about $22 billion, a new commitment uh, last year. And uh, it was 10% uh, growth uh, compared to the previous year. In Pacific, we are also e expanding our operations. And uh, we have uh, 15 Pacific Island country states, including Timor-Leste, of course, Fiji. Fiji is a relatively larger economy in the region. And there are many challenges, as you mentioned, and uh, those countries are affected uh, more severely by the climate change, and there are more uh, severe uh, uh, events uh, like uh, hurricanes, and also there is a sea uh, level rise uh, in some countries. So we need to support the climate adaptations uh, uh, to make harbors more resilient to make uh, road more uh, uh, resilient to the uh, uh, heavy rains. And also we need to support uh, the communities to get uh, good waters and uh, power, which is also, once again, more resilient to climate change. Mm -hmm. And some countries also are playing a more role in mitigation part uh, to reduce uh, uh, CO2 emissions. So we are supporting off-grid uh, uh, solar projects so there are many things, and we are also supporting uh, institution building and uh, policies. Mm -hmm. So these countries uh, should take uh, advantage of uh, the opportunities uh, uh, and also addressing uh, poverty, remaining poverty and uh, issues of uh, rural areas. 
So we need a stronger policies and the institutions that we are also supporting. Okay, excellent. Sounds like there's a lot of work that's happening with the ADB in the region. Um, so finally, um, there's been so much talk around the trade conflict between the USA and China. What impact are you seeing that having on China and also the surrounding countries in the region? As I said earlier, if it's not totally escalated, I think uh, impact on uh, the region is uh, moderate. And uh, in some countries, uh, because of uh, relocations of uh, the factories and so on, there can be a positive impact. Uh, and actually, in Philippines and Vietnam and Indonesia, there are more inward investment uh, from uh, China uh, it, uh, itself and also from other countries. But uh, the uh, region, especially East Asia, uh, including China, Japan, Korea, ASEAN countries and others, uh, these countries have been uh, uh, growing uh, more rapidly because of a stronger uh, supply chains. So it's a good network of uh, industries. Uh, but if uh, this uh, uh, kind of supply chain is totally damaged, and if uh, there is a confidence uh, loss of uh, consumers and investors, it's really bad. Mm -hmm. But as far as attention is uh, managed, if uh, these uh, uh, trade issues are solved uh, over time, I think it's, uh, it's, it's okay. But mm -hmm. we need to look at uh, how technology can be transferred between countries, how intellectual properties should be uh, protected, how about privacy issues, and how about taxations of e-commerce? These are not just about uh, uh, the uh, issues between the US and uh, China, but also uh, in the uh, global uh, community as a whole. Okay, well, thank you very much, and I hope you have a very successful meeting here in Fiji. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.